Far and away the biggest challenge for the special effects team was the crashing of the chandelier, probably the most famous moment in the stage show. For the film, three different versions of the chandelier were constructed. We need one um, complete one to be um, um, raised up to the ceiling, and then we have a special effects one, which is a copy of that, which has to crash down into the stalls. And um, then we have to re sort of revamp it, change it, for when it's meant to be the electrified one in 1919, you know, so like, so we really had three separate chandeliers. <laughs> Camera. Legends, thank you. Set, Joel. I'll have to fight away the so many of the years ago. A little illumination. Gentlemen. The rising of the old, broken chandelier will be completed using visual effects and CGI to form part of the opening sequence of the film. Of greater concern to the special effects team at Pinewood is just how to achieve the crashing of such a large and heavy object at the climax of the film in a way which will look convincing and impressive. Come on down, boys and girls, and mind your heads. So, Steve effects, have you want to get down to the sort of these are what we refer to as the lightweight chandelier, which is the one that we're going to drop on the stage and, and crash into the stage, then it bursts into flames. Um, and the reason we call it the lightweight one is because it weighs half a tonne in its entirety, whereas the genuine article weighs two and a half tonnes. Um, and obviously the genuine article is extremely expensive, um, and we can't afford to crash that one, so hence we're making our own version which will crash. So. This is the bottom half of the chandelier. You can see it's over four meters in diameter, so it's, it's, it's massive and it's, it's, it's 18 feet in height from, from the base to that top of the other bit which sits on it there. And the reason for, for us doing it in two halves is so that when it, when it crashes onto the stage, we want it to break in half. And so we'll have another release mechanism in there um, which will fire itself automatically when the bomb release so when the, it'll hit the ground and then it'll snap itself in the middle and then all the crystals and the lamps and the brackets will all sort of shatter under the impact of when it hits the stage. It's fairly intricate insofar as that all the lamp brackets and there's 98 of them um, have all got to be practical, they've all got to have bulbs in and, and on the top of each bracket there, will, there is a glass globe which we've got to make out of breakaway glass, whereas the genuine one's obviously a glass, because we're going to have probably eight or ten, maybe even fifteen stuntmen running around when this one crashes onto the stage. We've got to bear safety in mind, so we'll, we'll be making ours out of, out of breakaway glass. Along here are the moulds that all the crystals are being made in, and we're actually making our crystals in a, in a long line, so that we've actually got We've actually got each crystal joined up by, by fishing line. Here we are with the, the big chandelier. We're just putting the finishing touches to it now. We're putting on the breakaway globes, which are being held on with uh, hot melt glue. And we're literally probably an hour or so away from, from shooting it. I'm there still. And I think it's, even if I say so myself, I think it's a credit to the boys of my department that, that made it because it's, it's looking pretty good, I think, when you compare it to the real French one that uh, is in the stage next door to us. She weighs now 531 kilos. She'll travel at approximately two metres a second along the track, lowering from about 13 feet above the floor level down to 18 inches, when it will strike the front of the orchestra pit wall, smashing its way through that. There'll then be a big fireball come up through the wreckage and the top half of it should scatter onto the stage, causing more fire and damage. 
I would imagine the take would probably only last something like about, I don't know, 15, 20, 25 seconds at the most. So there's an awful lot of money riding on a very short space of time film-wise. Final preparations are made and cameras are checked. The shot will be rehearsed over and over before the chandelier is actually crashed. But not everyone needs to move. Virus, you know, once it hits all this polystyrene, which this is made of, that, that you know, goes very quickly. You've got the curtains, which is all, it's all been sprayed, you know, to catch light. You've got the flame underneath, so when that hits the gas, all the gas goes off. So, yeah, it doesn't look big to start with, but with the building, what we've got here, it, it would go around pretty quickly. Ready? The stunt is a success. Everything goes perfectly and the camera crews have enough great footage to create a dramatic crash sequence in the finished film.